So the phase 2 of Wrath of the Lich King is coming out soon, and the community's beloved raid, Aldor, will become available. But apart from Aldor release, Blizzard prepares some more changes and additions to the game. Let's look through all of them together, shall we? First things first, Aldor itself. Blizzard decided to release Aldor for Classic Wrath in its pre nerf state, to provide a bigger challenge to the community. And while the definition of pre nerf is not crystal clear, judging by the PTR rate testing data, it will prove to be challenging, with only a single percentage of groups who engaged Yoxa run managed to down him even in normal mode, and the true final boss, Algalon, is yet to be beaten. One big new thing that Aldor brings to the game that we've only seen once before is the addition of hard mod to most of the encounters. And like the previous available hard mod boss, Sertarion, with additional drakes, every Aldor hard mod is optional and has to be engaged during the combat in a special way, be it killing the boss without clearing mini bosses beforehand or killing bosses in a special order. And like Sertarion, Successfully clearing hard mode encounters awards your rate with an additional piece of higher level loot. Speaking of loot, all items in Aldor had their item levels bumped up. In case of 10 man normal mode loot, it's not a very significant bump, but 25 man hard modes will reward players with items of a higher level than Trial of the Crusader used to drop, which will supposedly keep Aldor relevant for much longer than it was in the original Wrath. And let's be honest. Such a great raid as Aldor does not deserve to be made obsolete by a filler raid like Trial of the Crusader. And while we don't know for sure how Aldor item level bump will impact the later raid tiers, we do know that due to this change some classes will be reaching their draw potential much sooner. Your time has come, warrior. Back in original Wrath, many physical DPS classes and some caster classes would only be allowed to shine in later tiers with more necessary stats like armor penetration and crit. Now, with Aldar item levels buffed, we will see Warriors, Feral Druids and Marksmanship Hunters steadily come closer to the top of DPS charts. And while they will not be at the very top, you will not be clowned at anymore for bringing a Fury Warrior to a raid. As for Retribution Paladins, sorry guys, your DPS is still meme. Another thing affected by the item level bump is Class Relics. Most, if not all, relics provide user with additional stats while using a certain spell or improved damage of a certain ability. With the item level buff, the stat increase will be slightly bigger, which might change some best in slot lists in certain cases. So, due to these changes, we can expect the DPS rankings to shuffle quite a bit after some time in Aldor. How much? We'll see. Another change to the raid roster in Phase 2 is the addition of a new boss in Vault of Archibon, Emelon the Stormwatcher who will be dropping tier 8 gloves and legs and, depending on difficulty, either deadly or furious gladiators pieces. Unlike Archivon though, Amelon does not drop tier chests, so the chance of you getting something for your class is naturally higher. As for PvP pieces, he can drop some off pieces in addition to the usual set hands or legs. And the mammoth too. How can we forget about the mammoth? Another big addition to phase 2 is a new daily hub in Ice Crown, Argent Tournament Grounds. During Aldor phase, the tournament is still under construction, and the goblin contractors will definitely make use of unsuspecting adventurers. You will also be able to enroll as your faction city champion. In order to do that, you'll have to prove your worth by doing dailies until you're deemed fit to carry the faction's banner. Then you will be able to represent the city of your choice, use their vendor to purchase some catch-up gear and choose one more city to represent and dailies for, repeat it until you can represent your entire faction. Every city will have their own vendor with their own assortment of items, which include a cosmetic companion, a tabard, two mounts, a cosmetic banner that you can put down, and their own flavor of level 200 catch-up gear. Let me know if you'd be interested in a full Argent Tournament overview video explaining how it works, what you can get there and what to expect later on. There is one more huge thing that Blizzard decided to add. A variation of Mythic Dungeons from Retail, Aptlinate Defense Protocol Alpha. At the start of the dungeon, the group can initiate the Defense Protocol Alpha mod to make the dungeon harder and get better loot as a reward. All the mobs and bosses get 100% health and 30% damage increase, plus a special effect like giving you a disease or spawning a mirror image of your enemy. Not something extra hard, 
but just enough to make you pay more attention to the content you're used to running through on autopilot. And of course, the rewards will be better too. In addition to a normal expected pieces of loot, you'll get additional piece of 10 man Naxxramas or Obsidian Sanctum loot, with the last bosses of the dungeon dropping Keltuzet or Eye of Eternity 10 loot. The drop tables are not randomized, so with time we will learn which boss drops which piece of loot. But for now, let's enjoy those rare moments of new and unexplored content. After all, it doesn't happen very often. Also, due to the fact that these special heroics will drop 10-man loot, the old 10-man rates will be dropping 25-man loot. The 25-man rates will also be dropping the same loot, but more of it. All heroics will be dropping emblems of valor instead of all heroisms, and the last boss daily will award you with new emblems of conquest, which you can spend on new older tier items. The conquest vendor items, which were previously item level 2 to 6, will also be bumped to item level 232 to keep them in line with new older item levels. Tier 8 sets will also be bumped to 2 to 5 and 232 item level respectively, which will fall in line with item levels of old war, but on the lower end of it. Some classes will prefer more of tier pieces over their tier sets due to vastly increased stats, which, again, might affect some best in slot lists. Blizzard also prepared some small quality of line changes and additions, namely, adding auction house sorting by buyout price to combat all those 1 copper beat 2000 gold buyout items, some achievements for veteran season of mastery players who managed to not die during their journey, and increasing arena points cap by 5000. And that's about it for the phase 2 overview. Leave a like if you found the video useful, subscribe to help the channel out and let us know in the comments what are you looking for the most in phase 2.